right, all right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. Welcome to the trip. All right, let me lower this for a second. Got some fresh tunes for y'all. Got some fresh moon for y'all. But um, I'm a little late tonight because the moon is setting very far west and it's going to hit the tree line actually pretty soon. But I figure instead of skipping a night, I'll just get on for a bit and then we'll see Orion for the second half of the show. I also noticed that Mars and Uranus are like right above the moon by about 20 degrees. I don't want to say 10, maybe 10 degrees. And I'm going to try and scope that, but it's, it's actually just a little too far. But I'm going to try that in the next couple of minutes. Just want to show us some earth shine. This is 42.4% waxing crescent. 9.49 on the clock, east coast, central Florida. It's a chilly night, but not, not as bad as yesterday. It's kind, of, it's kind of getting warmer. I hope everybody's had a good day. I had a long one, and I just got done with work, so I rushed to come here to, to get my stuff together and, um, and set up for us tonight. Just hopping in the chat. What's going on? Debbie, Rastaman Lives, Kimmy, welcome to Gil, or Gilles. Probably Gil, right? If you're new, please uh, check the description, ask questions. Hope you enjoy the show. And uh, let's let our, some of our friends join and uh, kick back with some jams while I try and hunt down some Mars here. Get going with some Dreamy, Dreamy. And then I'll play uh, two new songs tonight. One that I played yesterday, but it's mixed better. And then one that y'all haven't heard at all. So stay tuned. So far
All right, just jumping in here to say what's up and uh, say <laughs> what I wasn't sure which one it was. Was it Gilles? That's first way, or is it Gil? The second way. Tell me first or second, <laughs> and see if I remember if I said it right. Um, what's going on, Victor Morrison? And what's happening, uh, NGC? What's going on? Great to see you. Hey yeah, hey yeah. Thanks for the for the awesome email. Um, and thanks everybody for picking up tunes on Bandcamp. I really appreciate that. Every day I see a little notification. It's very nice. So I'm just gonna link that. I know all of you know it already, but share it with a friend. So yeah, 42% waxing crescent moon tonight. Tomorrow it'll be first quarter, like a half a cookie. And I think, like I said, I was a little bit late tonight, so it's going to start dimming rather soon uh, because the palm tree is in the way. So let's hang out for a little with our crescent moon. And uh, like I said, I'm going to play some new tunes for y'all. What's up, rainbows and butterflies? Second, good. G, like the beginning of good. Gil. Gil. Got it. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Oh, to your point, uh, to your question about Dan Winters. No, wait, that's Danny Wilton. <laughs> right. Dan Winters, Dan Winter Science does, uh, has fractalfield.com. That's what I have saved. So I think, was it you that recommended it or somebody else in the channel recommended that I take a look? And it's d definitely up my alley, although the page is just full of information. It's insane. There's a lot of stuff that Buddy Doggerty talks about, lots of things that I've definitely referenced. So it seems like I'd be into it, but I, I hadn't really dug in. I mean, the name sounds familiar, so maybe I did at one point, but I have it pulled up and... Uh, and set aside for a deep dive some weekend. Half of a special cookie. All right, y'all. So we got a few people in. Let me uh, play you this new track because I'm excited. Um, this is one. Actually, I did play it yesterday in a very raw form. So if you listen to the show yesterday, you'll see I've decided to share the progression of these this whole album and all these tracks with you at whatever stage they're in. So yesterday I played one called Delicate, and here it is in version 2, and I updated Dark Rums from yesterday to a version 4 that's slightly better mixed. Of course, they're rushing through the day with all my work and space. I only get a little time to work on music, but hope you enjoy this one. This is Delicate, and uh, the whole half, the whole second half needs bass and like orchestration, but I'm going to let it play through anyway. That's a lot of preamble. Let's rock. So
kind of a bit sloppy over there but yeah that's a brand new one if you're just joining i've uh i've been working on some tunes recently this brand new album so every time i have a little bit of time this past i don't know four days i've just spent some time trying to like craft a whole new slew of songs for the show this one is called delicate and uh the other one is called dark drums but i wrote rum because it was like three in the morning and I left it as dark rooms. <laughs> so I'm about to play that one for y'all. But after I say hi to everybody in the chat, I see Red Rum. How you doing, my bro? What's up, Ian Kendall? Good to see you. Cheers. Um, I miss anybody? Let me know. Genghis, did I say hi? Hello? Hello? Cool. Um, Kimmy says catch request. I will definitely play catch tonight, but towards the end, just going to riff on some new things just cause I've honestly, I love, I gotta say, I like my own music, but, uh, at some point I, I really just have to get into some new jams. So tonight is trying to play some new jams for y'all. So here's dark rums. And if anybody comes up with a better title for this, I'll change it. <laughs> tonight is a music centric show. I feel like we're going to have the moon for a little bit, and then I want to shift over and see Orion. 
I can't really get to Mars and Uranus, unfortunately, but I will try that tomorrow and the day after we'll have some more opportunities. It's like an odd, con not odd, but uh, um, a serendipitous conjunction of Mars and Uranus being together. So it's, it's easier. Uh, it's actually very hard to find um, otherwise. So spotting Mars is pretty easy and then shifting off to the left to see Uranus might be possible. So let's try and do that. Oh, and Silent Murmur. Welcome. That song was lovely. Thank you so much. The a whole second half was just like stream of consciousness. I want to work on all of that and kind of elevate it and add some different parts. First part's getting getting tighter. So Dark Room's coming up here. 10.05, Edge of Space. Let's go. I can feel, I can feel.
So yeah, that one is a little dreary, I realize, um, but it just happened to be there, so I let it play because it's new. Um, I've, I've played it a couple of times, but um, I'm working on the mix of that one. Mystère. Mystère. Um, thanks for all the kind words, everybody. Let's uh, let's crank it up a little bit more f into a little more energetic vibe this one's called standard candles and i haven't heard this one in a while but um when i put it on the other night i was like all right this is cool maybe i'll put this on the show we'll see where where i happen to pause it <laughs> it's a bit of a rocking number So I'm going to pause it. That's uh, half of standard candles. Let's keep going here and keep uh, throwing myself, <laughs> putting myself out there with these tracks. I love it because why not? Uh, Y'all have heard so many different uh, versions of my tunes. I see um, uh, Gil asking, what do I call the music type? So Honestly, I have like albums, like full on albums that are with like hard rock, you know, verging on heavy metal with some like prog elements. And then I, I have all these very sappy kind of pop songs, like strictly just kind of guitar strummy alt rock songs like Shoegazer and uh, Shoegazing. Um, I have some tracks that are like 
60s vibey like mantra like moody blues actually that's i'm not going to compare myself to moody blues but in that kind of era, that kind of vibe of like late 60s early 70s meditative rock or meditative hippie rock i have tracks like will powered which are like pure um i want to say dance tracks but you could call them like uh like hard electro or like techno to some degree I don't know. Y'all know a lot of you know my tracks, so so let me know what you think. Do I fit into a genre? I don't. I'm not sure I do. What's up, Vicky? Great to see you. Um, and Astrolabium. What's up, my man? Great to see you too. Alicia Evans. Howdy. Great to see you. Yeah, I, I'll I'll leave Mistel for uh, mystery for another for for some other late night sessions towards the end. I'll remember. <laughs> I'll keep the the energy going here with. Um, let's see, I don't know. Let me just play what I see here. This one is called Swell, and I'm also not sure if I played this for you. So I'm trying to just play new stuff above above and beyond, above above all tonight. Sorry, I'm barely focused. Astrolabium says super original, no genre. Thank you. I don't know. It's tough. Like I, I know how to classify it, but then when I'm sitting and writing it, I'm like, okay, I don't want to be afraid to use trumpets here. I don't want to be afraid to sound too synthy here. You know, Every, like that whole fear idea, I just throw out the window when I'm writing. So I feel like I'm all over the place, but, but it kind of works in some, in some weird way. Uh, Alicia, you said it. I left a comment on last year about an Instagram account. I'll take a look at that. And um, thanks for all the nice comments on the last video. Eclectic space groove jams. I dig that. All right, a little wind came through, a little chilly here. Sticking it out. All right, this one's called Swell. And it's definitely, it's definitely a fun kind of nostalgic number.
Those are a couple of like rando songs <laughs> just all over the place but that one was called world of crystal and before that was swell so all of these are things that i'm working on that i don't typically play because like they're in some form of like incomplete but i did it tonight just for fun and uh thank you for listening so let's see what's going on in the chat room NGC says, I'm back after being kicked out. Lol, I love technology. Kicked out of this chat room? I, I, def I definitely didn't do it, but uh, maybe you got kicked offline. Explain yourself. <laughs> and Silent Murmur playing along, playing harmonics on the Washburn. I remember I used to hang out with my buddies when I was a teenager, and he worked at the Washburn store back in the 90s, early 90s, when Dimebag was still playing Washburn, when Dimebag was still alive. Um, we used to play those, I forget the name of the model, but the kind of, the Dimebag model is so cool. But I ended up, like, becoming more of a, I don't know, I actually played Strat for a lot of years, and I played Yamaha, like, Ibanez-style guitars. And then I ended up getting a Les Paul for a few years to play, um, my 30s and then uh and the last five years i've had this esp model with twin seymour duncan humbuckers and that's just like my go-to axe at this point even though i still have the the fat head strat and the les paul i just almost never play them let's see All right, all right. Let's let's do some more. So I'm zoomed in here. I was going to talk about science, but honestly, I just want to rest my voice tonight. Definitely um, on this moon cycle, it seems like the weather is cleared up, so I'm going to do a lot of shows. So tonight, just going to keep it music and keep it light. Hope you're all feeling good. Uh, just wanted to talk quickly, not to get too deep on it, but Katharina Theophilus, um, this chain of craters, so obvious. You can see the butterfly pattern. You can see the side-by-side -side symmetry, the toroidal shape, the one ring to rule them all. Just in this one particular feature, just y'all can decipher it. 
I don't even need to point it out anymore. But it's and it's and it's right at the top of a giant um, Amare, which is I want to say that's Mare Humorum or is it Nectaris? Let me double check that. Nectaris. So Mare Nectaris very visibly a hexagon or even a pentagon at this point to the right of that Mare Tranquillitatis and then the chain of craters you have just to make sure I'm saying this right Theophilus, Cyrillus, and Katharina from right to left Theophilus the one with the trifecta of central peaks a, res a residual of electric arcing in my opinion but Katharina and, and Cyrillus, you can see side by side, make that butterfly pattern, the toroidal shape. And right through the center is this, in, in a way, if you zoom out and look at it from the wide view, it almost looks like a tree with the root system coming out through that pinch. All right, let's play some Hurricane over here. Ooh, that one is not the right one. <laughs> is it this one? There we go. No way. Yeah, that was a super rough version. I mean, it was further along than the other one. <laughs> Still pretty rough. All right, more more rough stuff. This one. Uh, all right, this one has a really strange end, which is why I never play it, but I really love the first half. And let me know in the chat if you've ever heard me play this one before. I might have on some drunken evening, drunken space ride, have played this track, but maybe not so um whatever i'm gonna play the first half i might cut it off halfway through <laughs> here we go this one's called drove me Thank you. 
going with the obscure jams tonight thanks for hanging out watching this beautiful hazy moon like you're referencing moonlighting 
Now, I definitely was a kid when that show was on, but I do remember it distinctly for some reason. That and Cheers like stuck with me for so many years. So yeah, the moon is hitting the palm trees in the west right now. And Mars I can see, but it's way too far west for the scope to point that way. So maybe tomorrow we'll try for Mars. And uh, right now I'm just going to sit with the moon. I like this. It's uh, not a lot of detail, but it's just beautiful. I'm just going to jam some more tunes here. Got my coffee. Got my smokes. All good. <clears throat> got a little raspy throat. What should we play? What should I play? Um, something different. Something different. What about... Your five leaves, your five leaves. Another rough one. bring it back home with some willpower and I'm gonna head off to Orion let's do it you know why? I've been beaten from the heart I know no lie I've been thinking about you all night why no why I've been waiting for you i 
get down tried to match it almost and got it like right before i hit orion but we are here with this beautiful i said heart of orion in the chat but really this is the tip of the so-called sword of orion if you're looking at it you'll see the belt that's what everybody recognizes the three stars and if you follow that trajectory downwards between the legs you'll see that at the very tip of that sword or sheath or whatever you want to call it uh, you'll see this trapezium cluster at the center of the M42, Messier 42 object, the great Orion Nebula. So it is, uh, I got the cold front so you can, you know, trapezium is not really fully visible. It's, bl it's a blurry mess, I gotta say, right in the center. But um, it's also very high up there right now. I think it's like 50 degrees, 55 degrees. Let me just double check that. Uh, 55 degrees so I'm gonna stick with Orion for a bit and keep jamming here let's do harmony wave thanks for all the kind words Oh, 
couple of tunes there, Harmony Wave, and then Repeat Parties was the one just now. So yeah, I was trying to take some long exposure shots, like two and a half second and single second shots of the nebula. And now I have it adjusted correctly, so I'm going to cycle through those, those shots I just took. But you can really see some nice features coming out. You can see the arms. It almost looks, it looks like a lot of different things. Um, but let's, let me see. So I haven't figured out the sketching stuff. Like I said, I was messing with the high DPI, very small text in OBS, and I happened to fix it, but then the preview of the video ends up being massive. So I can't really draw the way I used to. Um, I can only draw in one tiny portion. I'll have to sort it out. So either way, so trapezium cluster right here. Talk a little bit about plasma. Like I was mentioning yesterday, to me, this looks like the cross section of a fruit, like an apple, if you cut it from the top, or cut it horizontally. Almost looks like where seeds would form. Right? So there's that feature that I think is really fascinating. That's something that I've recently been thinking and pondering. So what that means is that we're kind of looking at a Birkeland filament top down. That's what, what I, I'm just revealing how I think about it. It seems to me that these shapes, the toroidal shape and the torus shape, sorry, the toroidal shape and the hypertrochoid <laughs> right here. Let's see. Um, why can I not see it? And it's just everything trying to work against me. So there we go. So hypotrochoid, hourglass shape, and then the donut or the toroidal shape right here. And then the trapezium cluster would reside on the dielectric inertial plane. And then it would explain colors that we see this idea of diffraction or seeing a spectrum of colors because colors and the sensing of the way we see colors, and I see, see in quotes, the way we resonate or vibrate with colors is through these plasma shells. So colors are sorted, the spectrum is sorted based on shells and vibrations. So it makes sense that we'd see red here and blue here, but what I'm thinking is that we're seeing this toroidal shape cut in half over here, but it's also turned let me try and draw that too it's like a chakra cut in half right ngc what's going on cyber sully good to see you like i'm not trying to prove a point i'm trying to just explain the way i i interpret it now because there are these ranges of layers from the center oscillation so i imagine that every point, every star that we see here, right, is an oscillator, like the heart, like the pineal gland, like the root chakra. And every single one of them has its own layers of plasma, own layers of plasma. And that's in three dimensions, of course, right? So it's, so it's like seeds with their own life. That's the life shell. And the oscillator is the star. And it creates these these plasma layers. So these are the onion skin plasma layers. But of course, at the the reason there's an oscillation at the center is because it exists along a Birkeland filament. So you get the hourglass shape, the hypotrochoid, and then you get the toroidal shape, the donut or the infinity sign. And this is where you get the symmetrical hexagons. You get the bridge of an eye. Right. This is. It gets complicated very quickly, but these are, these are where eyeballs are grown, like planets in orbit. And then the nose in creatures just automatically appears based along the fact that we're grown along a filamentary current. And all the shapes that we see on the moon, like these trapezoids, like the mouth, the, the jaw, square jaw,
all of its primitive shapes. So all creatures and everything is formed along these Birkeland filaments. At the very core of everything is this oscillating point along the Birkeland thread. It oscillates in the ether, creating these plasma sheaths, which is its own conscious layers. And as it reacts with each one, it creates the next one. Birth ends up being over here, per Eileen McCusick. Um, it's stored as a cymatic fractal, per Rupert Sheldrake. And uh, it's drawn to one another per mutual mass acceleration, or what is perceived as gravity in the standard cosmology, but really um, the force of mutual mass acceleration within the ether, per Ken Wheeler's um, ideas, that this oscillator is kind of pulling this piece of information, or this cymatic pattern, and this cymatic pattern is equally pulling um, this oscillator. And that's how it creates equilibrium between each shell. So the shells would be uh, notes, they would be in intervallic, um, all together they would be chords, with all of these together they would be symphonic, right, and on and on. Fractally, you can correlate almost everything in our reality from music to currency, to health, to philosophy, astrology, all to the same exact structure, physically, geometrically. So what I see here in Orion, right, is we have the hypertrochoid, so therefore this version, I would see the Birkeland filament twisting, the coaxial Birkeland filament going through here, right, but we're seeing it with counter-rotating currents. And then, but at the same time, there's this other column right here. So I would imagine this is also some sort of like hypotrochoid that goes that way. That's how you get this shape. It's kind of messy, but go with me. <laughs> and then other, then what else happens? But if I were to go out, if I could draw much further, um, if I could layer this image, right? If I could do a 20 image stack we would get these arms that would go completely around and you'd create this exact geometry. So I think it's really just this, we're just, I think it's uh, it's kind of amazing. It's like its own little galaxy right now because it's blurry, but thinking about it like that, it's almost like we're seeing one geometry like that kind of with another geometry at another angle, right, at another dimensional angle. So I think we're getting an overlap of shapes here. Furthermore, you get, sorry, I'm not looking at the chat if anybody's talking, I'm just kind of ranting here. But let me finish up. Uh, you've got this whole kind of idea of this phallic structure, right? Emitting light. This is almost like a profile. You got that. Space is pretty sexy, you gotta say. You got all these shapes going out, these diamonds. And on the flip side, you'd see this symmetrical geometric lattice. Lots going on here. Just a little bit about Plasma Cosmos, the connected universe. And uh, let me know if you have any thoughts. Uh, a lot of texture happening there. I mean, you see what I mean? I feel like the, absolutely the trapezium cluster looks like a cross section of a fruit. It's just, abs it's just crazy. Um, I'm going to definitely get better prepared tomorrow with images so I can put them side by side. If we can get this kind of shot tonight with this cold front moving through, then when it gets like 10, 5, 10 degrees warmer, this is going to be nuts. All night long, what, 11 p.m., perfect shot of Orion. So, let's see. Silent Murmur says, even the galactic center resembles a pine cone like our pineal gland. Absolutely, there's only one way that could be the case it's it what i kind of why i evangelize it so hard is because i think there's this uh this moment where people are like wow these shapes do look the same wow you know and it, it doesn't go further than making that initial connection or being told about that initial connection of wow these shapes do resemble one another isn't that wonderful but what i advocate for is taking that and unifying um, all these other concepts with that same paradigm. So it's not just that humans look like space, but creatures and particles and bacteria and fungus 
and fungi and all creatures and aliens, right? And all craft and like aircraft and buses, and cars and bikes, language, words, instruments, all of them are birthed of the same geometry. That's the utter, utterly profound next level of interpreting these shapes and not just residing with a, that's, you know, the, the kind of initial wonder of it. All right, let me play a, a little song here and, uh, and cycle through the shots. I think I have another one that might be a little bit crisper. Now I'm hyped on science. You know how I get into it. <laughs> it's called Why Am I?
right, all right. What's going on, Jedi Princess? Nice to see you. Hope your night is going well. Thanks, everybody, for all the kind comments and good vibes. I'm thinking I'm going to wrap it up over here because I know I'm going to stream tomorrow and the day after and the day after and the day after. Ooh, Mary, you showed up. Great. I'm so glad. Perched on the wing of a butterfly on the way to the sanctuary. Always dropping them beautiful phrasings. I saw, I was watching one of the old streams and reading everybody's comments. It's always so great to go back because, like I said, when I'm doing the show, I do my best to read, but there's so much going on that I definitely miss the kind of the gist of certain conversations. So thank you all so, so much. Silent Murmur is dropping some great knowledge here too. Yes, and it's sensible that our DNA resembles the Milky Way and that ancients would refer to it as the dragon harnessed to the mountain, puffing it, pulling it, <laughs> you know, there's my mind, mountain, mind mountain, pulling it, churning the stars into Amrita. Is that what you meant to write? Amrita, do I not, not know that word? Let me find that word. I love things that I don't know. Nice. Amrita is a Sanskrit term with two translations, one of them being immort immor immortal immortality and the other one being nectar. I love it. Ambrosia, right? Okay. Sanskrit, the word. Thank you. Amazing. Divine Am Amrita. Amrita. Great. So yeah, so of course we're looking at the M42 Nebula here, and uh, actually I did notice Vicky. Are you piecing out? You have a great night if you are. If you're still chilling, let me know. American Life videos. What's going on? Welcome. And more Jello. What's going on? The nectar of the stars. Exactly. I mean that's amazing. Stellar Amrita. So I do, I mean, like I said, I, it's hard for me to do these images when it's so zoomed in and OBS, but I'm going to do it tomorrow. But yes, the apple core. Here, I can actually, I'll just draw it. I'll just draw it. I feel like I'm being very whiny tonight. Okay, so you see ver this very defined diamond shape. So if we were to imagine this very big apple <laughs> and the Birkeland filament going through the core of the apple, I'm not sure I see it exactly like, I do see that trapezium is along this dielectric plane. But yes, it does, it does fit. I still have a lot, a lot of learning to do here, but this is how I, I envision the Birkeland filament going through. But, it, but again, we could be looking at this area with the Birkeland filament like cut cut from the top. So the Birkeland, like we're along this Birkeland filament in a way. That's what's so crazy is that these stars, the trapezium cluster, are coming right at us, right to the eyeball. And uh, so maybe we're looking at a Birkeland filament top, top down over here, and we're looking at a Birkeland filament side view here. I mean, it is that crazy. Um, or that logical rather that's sort of what I've been trying to explain because it does have this apple shape but then this is an apple from the top right there would be a spiral coming at it from here and then itself it would have its own dielectric inertial plane yeah it gets a little more complicated but I, I need some more room to draw it Vicky you're still hanging out awesome Mary, Mary. Cool. So, I was, so since Mary showed up, let me play catch and uh, wrap this show up for this evening. Um, I definitely don't want to burn out too quickly. 
like I said, over the holidays, it was so much fun, but it broke my sleeping schedule for work. <laughs> like literally I was up till four in the morning every night, like checking space stuff and so much fun. But the cycle, I want to try and stay, stay good, stay good. So thank you all so much. I'm going to wrap it up with catch here. Have a great rest of your night. I'll catch you all tomorrow or the day after, depending on the weather. And we'll see some moon. I'm going to try and go for Mars and Uranus. Definitely some more Nebula and Orion. And hopefully it'll be even warmer tomorrow. So the, the shots will be crisp. But really can't complain. Look at this. I mean, just seeing Nebula like this on video was something I never thought was possible. Like, for real. So, um, and tomorrow I will definitely be more eloquent. More eloquent. All Whistlers front and center. Exactly. So. And finally, another shout out. Eileen McCusick, Rupert Sheldrake, Ken Wheeler. Even though, man, Ken Wheeler says a lot of weird, funny things. But in terms of his science, it is sound. <laughs> so. Give him a listen. And of course, Thunderbolts Project. I, I read somewhere that David Talbot may have suffered a stroke, which or did suffer a stroke, and he's recovering. So that, I mean, these guys like Walt Thornhill and uh, Stephen Crothers and Pierre-Marie Robitaille and a bunch of them, man, they're getting old. So, I mean, I don't want to, actually, Pierre-Marie Robitaille is not that old, but, but Walt Thornhill, Crothers, and others just seem like they just need your support. So, if any of y'all haven't gone and watched their videos in a while, go give those old Thunderbolts Project um, EU 2015, 2014. Go back and like listen to Stephen Crothers, listen to Eileen, give that a thumbs up, get it some visibility. Those those videos are rotting and they're full of wonderful information that uh, changed my life that I share with you here. So catch and I will catch y'all demain captain out
through the cold.